Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He made some noise at the 2021 Olympic trials. He is going to pin to start his freshman year of college uh, in just a couple months this fall. Uh, today, we are talking to breaststroke extraordinaire, Matt Fallon. Matt, what's Hello. up, man? Uh, not much. Just sort of hanging in there right now. just talked about this a little off camera i i i think if you didn't go to olympic trials you you wouldn't understand this but there's a, a definite recovery period that's necessary after coming back from a meet, a meet like that would you agree oh i'm feeling it i I've, I've, de- I've still been getting in the water albeit not training half as hard as i was for Olympic trials but i definitely feel it like i have all my strokes just feel so much different it's really weird like everything i don't I'm definitely still trying to recover from <laughs> the whole meat. This definitely took a toll on my body. Like nothing has ever done. I, I'm, I'm with you and I didn't even swim. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I've, I've been sleeping 10 hours a night. I'll, I'll look at my watch and be like, Oh, nine o'clock. I need to, I need to go to bed now. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause like my body just needs it. It's, it's pretty bizarre. Um, I didn't, I didn't think that would, that would take that much of a toll on me. And I've been to trials before. This was your first trials. And so had you ever been to a meet that was over three or four days long like this? Um, Well, why Nats is five days. Okay. Um, Well, normal why Nats, why festival um, is why festival is just sort of like a regular four day meet, but um, yeah, why Nats is five days and even though the first day you don't really do much, that's still, I feel like that definitely still prepared me for this a little bit because you still have to hold the taper for the entire five days, especially if you're swimming every day. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Why Nats is one meet that I still have yet to attend that I really want to go to at some point. Um, would, can, can you give me a brief description of why Nats and what makes that meet so special? um it's loud everybody on the everybody on the pool you're either warming down or you're cheering like that's sort of like that's just sort of the consensus i mean there's just so many if you watch any of the videos there's just so many people on the pool deck screaming their heads off cheering for their team and it's a really fun meet to be at that yeah that sounds super fun i want i want to go to one eventually one of these days but so you've been to a five-day meet in why that's that's that is exciting that is loud and that is long, especially if you're swimming every day, heading into trials, were you expect, did you have expectations of just what the meet would be like? Um, as, as for what the meet would be like, um, I didn't really have any expectations. I mean, you obviously see Olympic trials a lot on TV and media. So I already developed sort of like, a like an idea as to what, swimming would be like swimming in the trials would be like but i hadn't really had any expectations for what going i'd already been to world juniors and i was just thinking oh maybe the process for everything would be similar to that and it ended up being sort of similar um but everything was sort of a surprise to me so it was really fun learning about everything so can you take us through this meet um your first event was the 100 breast i believe yes um, so, I mean, can you take us through that event, but also what, what surprises did you encounter along the way at Olympic trials? Um, well, the first event was the hundred breasts and I believe that was Sunday. Um, that first Sunday, there are two Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Um, going for the one breast, I didn't really have any expectations, although I wanted to do well, but. I remember feeling a lot more nervous than I should have been going up on the blocks. I remember like the days and weeks leading up to the one breast. I didn't really have any nerves because that's sort of my strategy going into these meets now. And even like an hour before, I didn't really have any nerves regarding the one breast. I just wanted to go in and swim, do my best and place as best I could. Um, but I remember getting up on the blocks just when I, when I finally got up to the chairs right near um, the blocks, it just started 
I started like getting, I wasn't cold, but I started like shivering because I had, I had a full park on and I was definitely warm, but I just started shivering. And that was uh, very odd for me because I was thinking to myself, don't be nervous, don't be nervous. But it just started coming back and um, swimming in that pool. It's sort of, I know a lot of people use this word, but it felt surreal because you just sort of, because in prelims, especially when you're not in a circle seated heat, because I believe the way they announce you is different, whether you're in a circle seated heat or not. Um, it all just went by so quickly. Like you get up on the pool deck or it all went by more quickly than I thought it would you just get up on the pool deck. And five seconds later, you're in the water. And then what feels like five seconds later, you're already at the first wall and you don't really have time to absorb anything. So that's how the one breast felt. I still did well, but it sort of felt really weird. Like it went by very quickly and I didn't have enough time to absorb everything. Um, but I, I took from that race what I could and I wanted to use my experience from that going into the two breast. And I think it was very beneficial for me to have the one breast first just to get a dry run. It makes a lot of sense. I think that that is applicable for a lot of swim meets, especially a taper meet, just kind of use that first race to get into the meet, get, yeah. get your bearings. And then, you know, the next race should be a little better. Um, so you have two days, I think between that hundred breast prelims and then the tuner breast prelims. So Monday, Tuesday, are you just hanging out? Is, I mean, is that what is that like to just have two days off in the middle of a taper meet? Yeah, that doesn't, that's never really happened to me before. It was fun. Definitely. I mean, I got to watch prelims. I got to watch finals. Um, it was, it was fun to watch my teammate Jack swim. Um, and it was just sort of, uh, I didn't, I was originally going to do some time trials, but after the one breast, I felt pretty tight. So I decided to lay low for those two days, which I think was a very good decision. Um, well, me and my coach from Florida decided to lay low. We sort of, we were sort of talking back and forth on that as well as me and my New Jersey coach. Cause I had been training with my Florida coach for a month, month and a half by then straight. And I was with my New Jersey coach for GSUI at the meet. So, um, we would sort of, I would sort of bounce ideas off my Florida coach, but also off of my um, GSUI coach. And I think that it was good to have sort of two coaches in a sense. Um, and I think that really helped me in terms of with advice for the meet. Um, so yeah, I laid low for those two days. Um, and I did some suited pace swims, but those I did it so that I wouldn't take very much out of me. And I just wanted to be more rested for the tube rest. And so then heading, that, that seems like a smart thing. And especially having two coaches, that seems nice. You just get to bounce ideas off and, and get, get a little more information on, okay, this is, this is actually what I want to do, or this seems like a good choice. Um, and then we get to this two breast you swim two ten one in prelims. Was that a best time? That was, um, I was pretty happy with that. It was, um, it was actually slightly faster than it felt like it was just because, uh, I sort of, it was, it was definitely a good swim and a great swim, but I knew it wasn't as good as it could be. Um, in the sense that I was definitely very subdued in the first hundred, obviously I go very slowly in the first hundred. I don't think that's a secret now. Um, but I was, I definitely felt more subdued in the first hundred there. I actually felt like I could get my bearing. Unlike that one breast, I felt like I could just go up to the guy next to me, uh, sort of pace off of him and get my bearings up. And then, um, that second hundred, I knew I was, I was obviously the plan was to come back on the second hundred cause that's how just I swim the two breasts. Um, so I definitely, I saw that I was with some of the big names and I definitely got a little bit excited. So I started maybe spinning my wheels a little bit. Um, and that I didn't come home slowly the second hundred, but I knew I could sort of, I knew I could take a few tenths off here and there definitely. Cause I was definitely spinning my wheels a lot on that second hundred. And that was just having not done the 200 breasts before on that big of a stage, or at least in a long time. Um, so it was definitely the prelims is definitely just a learning experience just getting that out of the way. 
Um, and still doing a best, best time in the meantime, I was definitely pretty happy with that swim. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's so that you're not, you not only made it to a second swim, you were top seed. Yeah. I think not, into semifinals. I going into the meet, if you had told me two ten one would be a top seed in prelims, probably would have, probably would not have believed you at all. <laughs> But um, I was definitely very happy with that. I was a bit surprised at first seed, but um, whatever happens, happens. So I just kind of rolled with the punches there. Had Mentally, had you prepared at all? Um, had, had you thought about the fact, I mean, obviously everyone's goal is to make an Olympic team, um, but had you thought about the possibility of yourself being a contender especially that early on in the, in, in the, in the 200 breast in the process of like, Oh, out of prelims, your top seed. It's like, okay. Yeah. I'm I like, as of now I'm right there. Uh, go, making the Olympics for this meet going into it. It just did not register in my mind as something that I would do. I was going to uh, Olympic trials to swim fast and for the experience. Mm-hmm. And um, I would think, okay, maybe there's like, a 10th of a 10th of a percent. I make chance. I make an Olympic team. I wasn't, I didn't want to be pessimistic about it, but I just wanted to, I didn't want to put any big pressure on myself. This mean, I just wanted to go out and have a good experience. Um, and I knew there were a lot of, um, I knew there were definitely a lot of people, a lot older than me swimming the two breast. And I think they were definitely going to do work in the pool. So I knew, um, there were definitely more than a few people in front of me in that two breast. Um, so I just went into it, maybe try and get a night swim. And if I'm lucky, I get a second night swim. So you got the second night swim. So you, yeah. you got a night swim. We'll yes. Um, first, first headed into semifinals. How are you feeling at that point? And can you take me through that process of heading into the semifinals and then how that race went for you? Um, well, I definitely took a different approach than most people to top semifinals in the sense that I didn't even know if I was going to make finals. So I put everything on the table and I went all out in semifinals. That was, I put up the best possible swim I could because I did not, I didn't know how fast I really was. And I didn't know how fast you would have to go to make finals. I didn't know how many people were, uh, weren't showing that won't sh- weren't showing all of their cards in prelims. So I kind of wanted to be as safe as possible just by going all out in uh, semifinals because there were a lot, of, there was a lot of uncertainty there. So I just decided, okay, this is the swim. This is the one I'm going to go all out on. Um, and so I just sort of used the same strategy I did for uh, prelims. Obviously there were two, two very fast breast strokers next to me. Um, and I just sort of pace off of them as well as I could, even though we have completely different swimming styles and um, be more subdued and be longer and stronger on the second hundred. And I think that definitely worked. <laughs> so uh, to give our audience some context and to throw a few numbers, you're in heat two of the 200 breast semifinal. You have Will Lacone in lane three. Kevin Court is in lane five. You're in lane four. Um, in the morning, you went 2101 and you were 1032 and then 1069. And at night, you were 1036, so about four tenths slower out to the hundred, and then 105. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 1052 uh, for 2089. Uh, that, that was the best swim I saw at Olympic trials. It was my favorite. It was my favorite swim, um, because you were eighth at the hundred and it's like, Whoa, he's, he's, he's eighth. And then you just turned it on and, and you were 32, you were 33, yeah. five, your second 50 and then 32, six, 32, five. I mean, it was, it was, it was an awesome swim to watch. Um, like you said, you, you tried to be long long out and then you really turned it on that second 100 was that surprising to you when you looked up at the board and saw 2089 um i before throughout the season i had envisioned myself 
I didn't envision myself going that fast. I didn't envision myself at least somewhat breaking 210, but I did not expect to split it like that. I did not expect to go out 1036 and come back 1052. And even like in the days leading up in my pace, I was thinking I'm probably going to like go out 102, come back and hold on and go 106. But I guess if that's the way, if that's the way I swim it, and that's the way I swim it. Um, but I guess on that second hundred, um, as I had said in the previous interview, it's all I had felt really good on that last fifteen. It's all about the feel, and definitely, I it was noticeable difference from that second hundred in prelims. I was grabbing the water much better, um, and I just felt I could just feel that I was going faster. Like I could feel myself grabbing more water. I could feel my kicks were stronger and I just felt a lot more focused and I could feel like the adrenaline kicking in on that second hundred. Um, and it just felt amazing. And then when I touched the wall, it felt even more amazing. <laughs> Dude, I bet. <laughs> um, th- just having, having a little bit to process that swim and, and looking at the numbers, do you gain anything? from that moving forward, just from a numbers perspective of like, okay, if I can swim a race like this and split it like this, maybe this is how I want to move forward in training. Um, sort of. Um, I mean, with that swim, it doesn't, it's not so different from the swim I envisioned that I'm going to completely change my training now. Um, but it definitely shows that I should keep going with what I'm doing because, and maybe develop some sprint, maybe develop some sprint breaststroke because um, maybe go out faster and come back in that same speed is the next step. Or maybe even come back a little faster. I'm, I'm still very, uh, I'm still thinking about it like that, but it definitely gives good information as to where you are and where you should be training at. Yeah. And uh, a little bit more of context on the same night that you had this breaststroke semifinal, uh, your teammate, Jack Alexi <laughs> had a great swim in his own right. And, and, uh, was in the semifinal of the hundred free. How, how cool was that for both of you to get those second swims on the same day? Um, he had a, Jack had a great meet. In fact, starting out, he didn't even better meet than I did. Um, but um, he definitely, I was definitely sort of, we were definitely riding off of each other's energy for the entire meet. Um, and it was definitely cool to see him swim at night as well, because we were the only two people from our team there. And we had both night, we both had night swims on that night. Um, so it was really cool to see both of us succeed right like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would think being the only two from your team, <laughs> it's kind of nice to have both get second yeah. swims there. Yeah. Um, so, so you have this, uh, two Oh eight, nine showing in the tuner breast semifinal heading into finals. Uh, again, maybe something you're not used to having that morning off. Um, and then, and then going into the final night. Um, how do you handle that day, which is Thursday, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't really have any expectations for myself in the final. So, um, I, there wasn't very many nerves. There weren't very many nerves that day. I was just trying to take everything as it comes, uh, trying to recover from the day before. Um, that definitely was definitely the day before it definitely took a toll on my body Two all out long course, um, 200 breasts, and then having to do another one at night the day after was definitely something I had never done before. And it just, uh, the entire day was just trying to get rid of that soreness as well as I could, trying to get all the lactic acid out as well as I could. Um, and that's just sort of how I handled that day. I didn't really... From that point on, I had sort of, I knew I had succeeded in what I had set out to do at Olympic trials. Um, I had, and I had already had a better meet than I thought I would have. And so just heading into finals, I wasn't really, I wouldn't really say I was nervous, although it's, you definitely get a little nervous just 
off the bat if you're lane four in the Olympic trials final. <laughs> Definitely feels a little weird, even though I if, even though I knew I had already had an, a great meet. So I was just trying to hang in there on that last day. Uh, that that totally makes sense. Um, I and so how would you analyze that swim um, in that final swim? Um, it felt similar to the prelim swim, um, although I didn't really. I sort of lost touch of the lead pack early because they were just out so fast, uh, and I can't really go out that fast. Um, so I was trying. As before, I was trying to somewhat swim my own race. I'm never trying to swim the race of the person next to me because I know they're going to be up fast with me. But at that point, I had I was trying to come back on that third fifty, and it my I was after like the one twenty five. My stroke just kind of started to fall apart, and from that point on, it was just about finishing, trying to trying to maybe pass one or two people if I could, but just trying to finish the race, and see what I went. That makes, makes total sense. And I think looking at the splits that are in front of me right now, six, you went one Oh one three in your hundred breast. Yep. Is that right? Yes. Uh, six, six of the eight competitors in that 200 breast final heat were out in one Oh one. So, you know, that, that would, that would be, yep. that would be a, a a tall order, but yes, (laughs) but you finished your race. Uh, I mean, you got to swim in a final uh, in lane four, no doubt, which I have to imagine is just like you said, it it comes with nerves, but you also have that experience now of like, I've I've been the the top dog before. Yeah. It felt like a completely different meet. (laughs) Honestly, like I, I didn't really feel any nerves behind the blocks, but it was that same race as the one breast prelims where I dive in and after like two seconds, I'm already at the other end. I'm like, wow, this is, this feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> like I, it's those were one of those races where you don't expect yourself to be in the race. Yeah. I, I, I can imagine. I wouldn't know, but I can imagine. Um, so I have, to, I have to ask you about, so the night after um, the tuna breast semifinal, Swim Swam publishes an article and the headline just made me bust out laughing because it was, the headline was simply Matt Fallon and Nick Fink went to the same high school. That is true. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I, yeah, I read it. I'm like, I'm sure that is true, <laughs> but um, you know, and I'm sure people were interested in it after seeing you swim. And obviously Nick Fink is an elite level breaststroker. He went on to make the Olympic team in that turn of breast. Um, is is there any insight you could give us into that fact? Is, does, does that hold any significance in your life whatsoever? Um, well, the one significant thing from that high school, um, obviously it's a great high school. I like it, uh, thank you school. But um, our high school swimming coach is definitely, uh, he's definitely a notable person. Um, and uh, he is sort of, even though I hadn't really, I hadn't, I've definitely been doing a lot of high school swimming. I did high school swimming all four years. Um, I was even in Florida. I came back to New Jersey to do high school swimming again. Um, even though that high school coach, uh, Steve Drosty wasn't there this year. Um, he definitely has had an impact on my life in the sense that, uh, and he's been there for 20 years, I believe. So I think Nick would have had him as well. Um, yes. Uh, and he just, he's given me a lot of great advice because he's just sort of, he's been to Olympic trials before he knows a lot about the sport and even some of his, even some of his training, uh, when I, when I have an off day in swimming sometimes, or when I have an off day for my club team, this was a couple, cause obviously you couldn't really do this now, but like freshman, sophomore year, I would go to Pingree for some practices and he would be there and he would sort of, he would just sort of do, um, he would do whatever he, he's always doing whatever he can to make you better at swimming. And I think, um, he wasn't just sort of there to be there. He was there for, uh, he was there to make us better as a team. And I think that's definitely what contributed to, uh, the success, the success of our team. Um, 
And it's definitely obviously had a positive impact on a lot of people because I've had two people in the trial final. So definitely a great person. That's, that's, that's a wonderful testimonial. And also, yeah, it's a good point Two two kids from the same high school swam, swam for the same high school coach um, from, from the same high school. Did, were, was Nick also on the greater, on, on the Somerset Valley YMCA club team? No, okay. he was not. Uh, I don't exactly remember which club he was on. I think he was on Cougar Aquatic Team, um, which is pretty actually kind of slightly far away from uh, – it's not really that far away, but it's not super close to where greater Somerset County Y is. Uh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> again, this article, the, the headline just cracked me up because I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm sure that's true. But yeah, is there any, any, any actual connection besides that they went to the same high school, which thank you for clarifying and clearing that up for me. Um, so you've had a few days to rest, to recover, to kind of process trials because not only is it physically taxing, but emotionally it's, you know, it is, it is as up and down of a swim meet as you can get. Um, have, have you had time to just reflect and kind of be like, okay, this is, this is what I've gained, or this is kind of what I've has been going through my mind in the last few days. Um, it definitely hasn't set into my mind yet. Like what happened? Like I've just, I haven't, I've been thinking about it somewhat because obviously it was a big event that just happened a week ago, but I haven't been thinking about it as much as I thought I would. Um, It's definitely something where I've had learning experiences. I had a few swims. They were, they were good swims and I'm just going to learn from them and I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do next. Um, And obviously I can dwell on those swims as I sometimes do um, for as long as I want, but uh, I need to focus. I need to focus on what is coming next, and I think that's a good mentality to have. Agreed. Uh, and you've got you've got some cool things coming up. You've got summer league, which not. I, I feel like summer league is so different from state to state. So can you tell me about your summer league and what makes it something that you want to do, even as a senior in high school? Um. Well. I actually haven't had the time to do it in I think three years it is. So def- doing it my senior year and I've swam at that summer league team for so many years. It's definitely just, I just want to make one last big splash there, but definitely because I have a lot more time this summer. Um, I already hadn't really planned to go to any meets after Olympic trials because I knew, because I sort of foreshadowed that, Olymp- or I sort of somewhat knew that Olympic trials is going to be definitely um, I knew that I had put all of my heart and soul in the training for Olympic trials. And if I had trained for anything else after Olympic trials, um, or like if I had started training for something directly after Olympic trials, it just wouldn't be the same. Um, so I think, uh, just stopping at Olympic trials and using the summer to sort of not necessarily recover, um, but just stay in shape, um, maybe do some training towards the end is definitely was definitely my plan since I knew I was putting everything in Olympic trials. So um, summer league is sort of a form of um, sort of saying my goodbyes to the high school swimming world, um, getting to see everybody on that team one last time, even though I haven't had the time to do it recently um, since a lot of my taper meets were at the end of the summer in the past few years. Um, but it's also a great way to just get in the pool and have fun. I think that's what the sport's about. Dude, I wish I could do summer league. That sounds like a blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, 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 that's really cool. And I, I love the mentality there of just, I put everything I had into trials, no matter how the meet goes. Like, I think I'm just going to need some time to have fun, stay in shape, do, you know, do summer league. That sounds great. Um, especially because you are a senior in high school, you're, you're now done with high school, I, I assume. And, uh, you're going to college in yep. just a couple months, you're going to Penn. 
did you get to talk to Penn teammates or coaches while you were at trials or, or around that period at all? Um, <laughs> I got to talk to my Penn coach just over text for um, just over text during trials. Um, and then in Florida, I was actually training with my college roommate. So that was fun. Um, he had referred me to that team. Okay. Um, and definitely that team is, that team definitely had a big impact on how I summit trials because uh, they have a very, uh, it's not super huge. It's not definitely not as big as my team, <laughs> but um, it's definitely a very elite program. Um, and the coach has done a lot of good for me. Fred Lewis is a very great coach, very great person. Uh, he has a lot of dedication to the people who swim on the team. So it was definitely very beneficial to swim on that team um, going into trials because obviously there were a lot of long course workouts in the months of January. They do long course workouts all year round. And that's definitely what I was needing because my team doesn't start until we started long course workouts like two days ago. Okay. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, so that seems like a good thing. Uh, you're going to, you, how are you feeling heading into college, especially with, with those, with those trial swims under your belt? I mean, that I would, I would imagine that's a bit of a confidence boost. Yeah. It gives me confidence in the sense that I know, um, with the right training and I'm definitely going to get the right training at Penn, uh, that I can still improve in the sport. And that's sort of, um, I can still, if I put in the work, I know I can still improve. I know that there's still something there that I can get out of the, get out of the sport. Yeah. And that gives me a lot of confidence. As, as it should, I think. <laughs> um, I, I heard from someone was telling me this. Uh, does your brother go to Penn? Yes. He's going to be a senior there next year. Dude, how cool is, so did you and your brother grow up swimming together? Um, not entirely because it's sort of complicated, but he, while I switched to Somerset Valley, he switched to, he stayed on Somerset Hills and then he didn't really swim for a few years. And then he started swimming again his junior and senior year. And then he got, and then he walked on the pen and he's been swimming at pen ever since. Okay. Gotcha. So, so we swam on, we swam high school together because I was, I was a freshman. He was senior same thing how it's going to be at Penn so that was definitely fun to swim with him yeah. but um yeah it's been fun swimming with him do you, I mean are you guys very close to you do you talk a lot are you excited to to be back with him for that uh reunion um well I think we haven't been super close over these past few years just because I haven't really seen him very much but uh, it's definitely going to be a great opportunity to get closer to him over these next few years. Nice. So it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate. That's exciting stuff. Uh, Matt, I, I love talking to you. I really appreciate you taking the time um, to sit down and chat and digest this 2021 Olympic trials meet with me. Um, before we sign off today, any parting thoughts for our audience? Um. I don't, I don't really know what to say. Just, uh, if you're swimming, have fun with it. That's all I can say. Um, it's been an honor talking to you today. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.